bolts associated with strike slip bolt systems can be amongst the largest structures on the continents. This satellite image is over 600 kilometers across, and here's active strike slip zone, the Shaman Fault, running really close to the Pakistan-Afghan border. Over in the east, to the right, is an important fold belt, the Suleiman Fold Belt. And we can trace these folds in towards the fault zone. And as we get very close to the fault zone, the fold axes, their hinge lines, appear to be parallel to the fault. So what's the origin of these fault parallel folds? Well, we're going to investigate two models. Here's the first one. So in this model, we've set it up with a blue layer, which represents a sedimentary cover, overlying a basement represented by the green blocks. And running at depth in the basement is a strike slip fault, which is left lateral. This setup will impose a shear on the sedimentary cover, and folds will form as a consequence of this shearing. Folds formed in this way will initiate at 45 degrees to the fault zone and form an on echelon array. So here we are looking down on the folds. Let's impose some more shearing. So as a consequence of the shearing, the folds above the fault zone are spinning. And if we let this process continue, we'll spin around to become nearer parallel to the fault trace. So what are the consequences of this type of deformation? Well, in conventional folding, the hinge line of the fold forms perpendicular to the direction of maximum compression. And consequently, the cleavage in that fold is axial planar. In other words, the bedding cleavage intersection is parallel to the hinge line of the fold, but not in the case that we're looking at in the strike slip model one. To explain the difference, let's explore this with a simple set of cartoons again. So let's imagine looking down on the zone of folding that overlies the fault. In this simple diagram, the fold trace that will develop is in blue, forming at 45 degrees to the shearing. And we're going to explore what happens to the cleavage trend, which will be picked out by the long axis of the yellow circle that will become elliptical. So for reference, this is the original fold trend. So now we've imposed some shearing and we can see as a consequence the orientation of the fold hinge has rotated. So we've got a new fold trend. What about the cleavage? Well the cleavage trace will be defined by the long axis of the yellow ellipse. And it's there. At first sight, it might look like it's parallel to the blue line, the hinge line, but actually, it's not. It's oblique to the trend of the folds. This is called cleavage transection. In other words, with respect to this shearing, the cleavage is lagging behind the rotation experienced by the fold hinge line. So let's go back to our block diagram of cleavage and folds. This is the pattern for conventional folding with axial planar cleavage. This is the pattern for a transecting fold. And you can see that the intersection line between cleavage and bedding is oblique to the fold hinge line. So that's model one, folds formed by strike slip shearing above a strike slip fold. The folds initiate at 45 degrees and then rotate, gradually becoming for parallel as the shearing continues. The folds initiate in an on echelon pattern, but to achieve parallelism with the fault clearly requires a lot of strain and therefore a lot of displacement on the fault. We haven't got anywhere near it in these cartoons. So let's look at an alternative model, model two. In this model, we're gonna suggest that folds form parallel to the fault due to partitioning of oblique convergence transpression. This is called inline folding. The folds form parallel to the fault rather than rotate into parallelism. 
so if the folds don't rotate, the cleavage will remain axial planar throughout. So we have a simple test where we can compare the relationship of the bedding cleavage intersection to the fold hinge line. Well, let's do that and let's go to Lebanon where the Dead Sea Fault system forms a restraining bend. Here we are in the Bekar Valley. The fault structure we're going to analyse is represented in the landscape by the ridge that's got snow on it in the distance. And the fault runs close to the flank of this structure. Let's step back. So here we can see in a satellite image the landscape that we were just sat in, the fields on the left of the Bekar Valley, and the ridge is the antiform, and we're looking south along the Yamuni Fault, this major strike slit fault zone that's left lateral. The antiform is called the Baruch Anticline, and you can see that it's parallel to the fault. So let's step even further back and look at the tectonic setting. So we're on this bend on the Dead Sea Fault system where the relative motion between Arabia and the eastern Mediterranean is oblique to the trend of the fault. It's converging with the fault. And here is the trend of the fold, almost parallel to the trend of the fault. And the question is, is this fold transected? So let's share some data that's been collected in the field. We're going to plot the bedding cleavage intersection and then compare that with the hinge line of this major structure. So this is the orientation of the hinge line and it's trending north-northeast, south-southwest and is effectively horizontally plunging. Let's now plot on the measurements of the bedding cleavage intersection measured on a transect across this fold. And these two form a cluster that trends north-northeast, south-southwest. Here's the mean orientation, so we can compare the hinge line with this bedding cleavage intersection and they plot on top of each other. So is this fold transected? No, it isn't. So we're dealing with this type of deformation, inline folding. In this model, the fold axes remain parallel to the fault during the evolution of the structure. So this is sort of how this works. We're looking across the anticline, to the Yamuni Fault and beyond would be the rest of the Arabian continent. So we're dealing with partition transpression and consequently on the ground we're dealing with a conventional relationship between cleavage and the fold. The cleavage is axial planar, the bedding cleavage intersections therefore are parallel to the fold hinge line. So we've explored the origin of fault parallel folds. And we've done this using two distinct models. In model one, the rotational model, the folds form in a layer above a deeply set strike slit fault zone. They form in an on echelon array and then spin round with increasing shear to eventually become parallel to the fault trace. This requires significant strain. In the alternative model, we explained this by partition transpression where the oblique convergence is resolved into an ideal strike-slip component and compression perpendicular to the fault trace. In testing between these two models, we can use the relationship between the bedding cleavage intersection and the fold to see whether the folds are transected or behave in a conventional manner. So with some simple field measurements, we can resolve this tectonic problem.